Hey everybody, thank you for joining episode 30 of The Green Life. I'm really excited about today's episode. Although the subject is quite heavy and people can be quite afraid of it because we're going to talk about breast cancer, I have a guest that is going to deliver this message of healing, empowerment and complete hope. And I couldn't think about a better person to speak about this than Dr. Veronique Desaulier or the breast cancer conqueror. Dr. V has gone through breast cancer twice and as an outcome of her experience, she has created a way for women to really empower themselves with knowledge, skills and very practical choices that can not only reverse breast cancer or help reverse breast cancer, but prevent it. And that's the most important thing. She has an amazing book available, which is a bestseller, which is called Heal Breast Cancer Naturally. She has a program called the Seven Essential System. And with that, it comes with supplements and a program that you can do for coaching. She is the spokesperson for everything that is alternative, that supports even conventional medicine and can really empower us women to feel comfortable with being afraid and then taking power from the fear and really put it towards healing. I am so blessed that I've spoken to Dr. V. She is beautiful inside out and such a way, she has such a way of sharing and kindness about her and I think you'll love this episode. So without further ado, let's go into it. Welcome Dr. V. Hello Dr. V. Thank you for joining us on The Green Life today. How are you? I'm doing so great, Chantal. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I'm really excited to share my message of hope with your audience. I'm excited too. You are really the face of hope. And I think a lot of women need that uh, in an environment where uh, we are so scared of the C word. And uh, you have really shown that fear doesn't get us anywhere, but actually courage and and, uh, knowledge really does. So for people that don't know you or your journey, can you just give us a little background? Yes. Uh, so I'm a chiropractor by profession, but um, you know, 23 years into my practice, I was in the shower and I was doing a breast self exam, and you know, I felt that lump that changed the course of my life forever. Um, you know, I I just I was in shock because I was the wellness warrior and I was doing everything right. So I thought, right, I was under chiropractic care. I ate organic before organic was in style. I breastfed my children. I had home births, you know, exercise, took supplements. I mean, I was doing everything right. Um, So I really had to do a lot of uh, self-reflection and and really think about, you know, what allowed the cancer to show up in my life? Because we know that cancer is just a symptom. It's not the cause. And so I... you know, really thought long and hard and, and realized that even though I knew I was going to heal my body, that, you know, there was still some trepidation, some, you know, a little bit of fear because of what we know about cancer. So I asked myself, you know, what is it going to take for me to heal my body and reverse this, this disease that's there? And I literally sat down with a pen and a pad and I just started writing things down and I came up with um, a system it's called the seven essential system. So it's seven steps that if you follow, you never have to fear cancer or any disease for that matter, because it covers all the foundational aspects of healing. And when you did that, when you did that um, list, did you find that you were lacking in some of the things that you listed? And this is why your body um, had was facing cancer? Yes, definitely realized that there were some uh, emotional traumas that I needed to deal with. That was a, definitely a big one. Um, you know, my hormones were off. I was um, living in the fight or flight mode. I was raising three children. I had a very busy practice. I was in an unhappy marriage. And so I was just, you know, very, very, very stressed out. And we know that stress uh, leads to a lot of things. And so in recognizing that, then I realized, okay, this is what I need to dial back on. And I, um, I did everything naturally. You know, I did everything outside of conventional medicine. The first time I did use the black salve on the tumor and expel the tumor. I uh, don't recommend that because it's, you know, very, very painful and, and you have to really work with somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, and then when I, uh, you know, when I, it took me two years to heal in that first journey, 
I sold my chiropractic practice and I started sharing my healing journey with the world. I had no idea. I just threw up a website and started sharing my journey and one thing led to another and I became known as the breast cancer conqueror. So five years into that, this was uh, 2015, 2015. <clears throat> um, I was tired, I was stressed, I was coaching women from sun up to sundown. I just wasn't feeling well, my hormones were off again. And I, you know, I could I could tell something was off in my body. And sure enough, you know, breast exam, uh, scans, blood work, all of that, you know, showed that there was there was something happening again, the same, same area. So this time talk about shame and guilt, you know, here I was the breast cancer conqueror coaching women all over the world about how to heal breast cancer naturally. And here I have it again. So that, um, that really set me back. But I realized um, I had done some work in my first journey, but I had to really dive deeper this time, because I never wanted to go through that again. And so I really looked hard and long at my seven essential system. And I dove deeper into the emotional healing. I had uh, some dental issues that needed to be addressed. My thyroid was off. My hormones were off. Um, I learned that it was okay to say no and to practice uh, self-care and self-nurturing. Um, I, um, I stopped doing personal coaching. I trained two coaches to do that for me and really dialed back my work so that I could do more things that bring me joy and less things that bring me pain. So three years later, I was free and clear and that's uh, 22, so four years now, going on four years now. Oh, that's fantastic. Well done. I can, I can imagine and I can relate actually because um, when I started coaching, I had come out of eating disorders and I reversed uh, type 2 diabetes and I felt like, you know, that's great. I'm healthy now. But when we, we were moving from London to Portugal, we purchased a, a room uh, in the mountains of Portugal, not speaking the language. It was very stressful managing a project here. And my husband is like, you're going to have to do it because you speak some Latin language. You can understand what more or less what they say. <laughs> I'm like clueless. And so I had to deal with this and I didn't really understand the impact it was having on my body. And it went through the extent that um, although I used to eat, you know, so well and look after myself, and even when I transitioned from a, an omnivore diet to a plant-based diet, I did it in such a smooth way in 2013 because I was, I knew how to eat, but when now I just kind of, you know, when you lose interest in really looking after yourself and I'm like, okay, this is vegan. It's fine. This is vegan. It's okay. And right. I, I started packing my body with a lot of processed foods and um, I wasn't feeling well, but I wasn't able to see the problem and uh, lo and behold um i gave myself pre-diabetes again and um and i was like and also my liver was a mess because i could even see my body like my legs were full of fluid and they just lost the shape that like, they probably gained a new shape that was just like pillars and um i was looking awful and i was feeling just like i looked and i was like okay i got to a point where i was not able to wake up in the morning and have clear eyes bright eyes and I was like this is not good um and that's when I changed everything but I felt like a fraud because now I'm telling people how to eat healthy and be mindful and and practice yoga and even teaching you know I was teaching yoga and and I wasn't looking after myself at all and it's such a it's painful but at the same time it forced me to like be okay what do I want to be here? I want to be somebody that just talks and doesn't practice, or do I want to really represent what I'm talking about? And, um, you know, and, and actually show that we are so much more in control of our health than we are given credit for by the system. And that's such a powerful thing. Then, of course, COVID happened and everybody freaked out. So that was a really good time to be like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to freak out. I'm just going to really show that we are powerful. And um, so I can totally relate to, to what you're saying. And I'm happy that you came up and said, no, I'm this, I healed again. And this time I want to do it properly. Um, I love what you talked about. So in your seventh system, which is beautiful, I love the emotional part. Once um, my first boyfriend years ago, uh, his mom had um, cancer, breast cancer. And uh, 
the oncologist looked very unhealthy and was like, just do chemo and don't worry about it, I eat ice cream. And uh, she, thankfully she was wise enough to go and see a homeopath. And he said to her, cancer is a spiritual disease. Mm. And so when we talk about emotions and healing that inside that really brought up the memory and I would love you to, uh, you know, elaborate a little more about what that meant for you and what you're teaching women mm. when we go into that chapter. Yes. Yeah, so healing the emotional wounds is, is, um, is challenging because most women with breast cancer are type A personalities. We're perfectionists. We're empaths. We're taking care of everybody. I mean, we have like all the traits of the cancer personality. And so to um, take the time for something intangible, like healing your emotions, I mean, yeah, we can, we can do pills, we can do fasting, we can do enemas, we can do all the things, but to sit back and do nothing for 30 minutes or an hour every day, but just journal or meditate or pray or, you know, those things, it's so foreign to us and to take that time for ourselves. Um, and so for me, uh, there was a lot of emotional trauma as a child. I was, uh, you know, had alcoholic parents. I was sexually abused by a convicted pedophile from the age of three to five. And this is like in the 1950s. So we're talking like way back then. He was our neighbor. And, but nobody talked about it. I didn't, I didn't know about it consciously until I was in my late forties. And I had, you know, that repressed memory that came to, and sure enough, ask my mother, ask my sisters, they all knew, but it was the family secret, right? Nobody talked about it. So, you know, doing that kind of work, I mean, I was doing a lot of um, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, a lot of reading. Um, I, you know, took alcohol out of my life 100% for many years. <clears throat> and um, I just learned to heal those, that little girl that was inside of me because she was the wounded child that was running my life in the adult body, right? And so that's mm -hmm. why there were, you know, bad decisions about relationships and, and decisions about things in general. And so, uh, you know, I just realized there was such a strong connection. And then with breast cancer, it's a nurturing and uh, um, relationship type of cancer. And so it's very important, <clears throat> excuse me, for women to look at that. And there's so many wonderful modalities that we have available to us. You know, everything from EFT to EMDR, we have EVOX, um, you know, the list goes on and on. A German new medicine, recall healing. I mean, there's a lot of therapies that can really help us um, unpeel the layers of the, uh, of the onion to get to the root cause. Wow, yes, absolutely. Um, I love that. And that we are energy beings, right? We are very we work with frequency and um, those emotions have frequency when they sit inside of us. I, I actually, I interviewed Dr. Northrop and she brought something up from her book uh, the, um, about menopause that I, I was like, wow, this, this is me. I have to do something about this. And I actually had to really reconsider my relationship with my mother um, because one of the things I think that really brought up a lot of the not looking after myself and getting myself sick was these traumas that from childhood as you mentioned and it's amazing how they come up especially through perimenopause <laughs> it's like yeah. I'm coming out you're better ready yeah. for me and so when I finished our conversation I was like oh my gosh and um yeah it was uh it was powerful so wow I yeah a lot of people don't we live in almost in a matrix that doesn't allow us to feel because mm -hmm. we are always busy and uh, distracted. And mm -hmm. I think it's on purpose, you know, in a way, because uh, mind, people that don't feel, they don't have that time to connect, they're less mindful about so many things, not just that themselves and their health, but, you know, our impact then in the world, right? So I don't know if you felt like that, but when you were not tap tapping into your inner self, those bad decisions you talk about, obviously had a ripple effect, not just on your life, but on other people's life, right? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, just one of the things that I, I talk about, well, this is actually another one of the essential, essential number three is to balance our energy. And part of that energy, you need to learn how to get out of the fight or flight and get into the relaxation response every day. Um, I love using the heart math app. 
you know, that looks at your heart coherence, your heart rate variability. That really was a big game changer for me because although I thought I was getting into the relaxation response when I was meditating and visualizing, when I put that little clip on my ear and looked at the app, I was still in the red zone. I was still incoherent. You know, my, my heart was not in, in that um, balanced heart rate variability. So I really learned to connect deep, um, deeper and learn to breathe through the heart and breathe through those um, positive frequencies of emotions. And doing that every day just really helped me train my mind and my body because when I get stressed, I, I catch myself now. It's like, oh, okay, it's time to dial it back, you know, because it's not going to serve you if we stay in that fight or flight, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So emotions are very much connected to what's happening inside of us biologically as well. And one of the core um, steps for you is nutrition. Can we talk a little bit about how you um, looked at your diet, what changed and what is your advice for other people? Yes. So essential number one is to let food be your medicine. And, um, you know, one, the, one of the biggest questions we get all the time is what's the best anti-cancer diet for breast cancer? Well, there's a perfect diet for every single individual on the planet. We're all biologically different. And um, I have seen vegetarians and vegans do well and I've seen carnivores do well mm. um, it really depends on your genetics on your belief about your food um, but when it comes down to it you know simple things organic as much as you can um, lots of vegetables on your plate uh, minimize the fruits um, you know we stick to berries lemons limes apples if there's things in season like peaches and things like plums, you know, those are fine in, in season. Um, and then lots of medicinal mushrooms, uh, nuts and seeds, make sure that you sprout them to, you know, get the life force started in there. Um, and, you know, juice, monitor your blood sugar if you juice, because I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd been juicing for decades and then when I went through my second healing journey, I hit the juice even harder, but realized in checking my blood sugar that it was bumping up my blood sugar. So I had to dial back the carrots and the beets and stick to more greens and, <clears throat> you know, green apple, lemon. And, um, you know, look at uh, your, your quantity of food as well. You know, we don't need, you know, you... <laughs> Americans have big plates. You go to Europe, they have much smaller <laughs> plates, right? Totally different aspect of eating. So, you know, your quantity and your quality of food is, is very important. Absolutely. I love that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Europe is very conservative with plates. However, depending where you go, the quality sometimes can be a little bit challenging. And, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, fatty meat and um, a lot of oil in everything. And, you know, I, I believe that everything in, can be good for you, as you said, depending on the person. Uh, but I feel like sometimes exaggerated because people just don't know. And we, we think, well, we culturally always ate that way, but our body didn't have to fight so many problems before. And you mentioned how important organic is, which actually taps into the next question, which is about toxins. Obviously, pesticides are toxins and it just takes a little longer for them to affect us because we're bigger than bugs but what else what are the toxins people don't think about generally that you think they should start paying attention to perfect lead into essential number two is to reduce your toxic exposure <laughs> i don't have the book in front of me <laughs> oh yeah well that's good it worked out really well um so when it comes to uh hormones and breast health very important for you to be aware of environmental pollutants, pesticides, herbicides, because they, they are what we call xenoestrogens or chemical estrogens, and they will mimic and stimulate aggressive estrogens in your body and possibly, you know, trigger breast cancer. Um, look at, you know, plastics and phthalates and what you put on your skin, because anything you put on your skin is absorbed directly into the body. And so, really looking and being careful about those xenoestrogens because um, it's not your hormones that are driving the cancer, but it's your ability to 
uh, break down your natural hormones and break down and get rid of all these excessive estrogens in the, in, in the environment. Um, and then really understand that you know, your home should be a haven, right? And so look at what you're using to clean your home. Um, you know, use um, essential oils and diffusers instead of artificial candles and those things that you plug into the wall. Uh, look at EMFs. You know, EMFs are extremely dangerous. And then, you know, with 5G now, that's even getting worse because those EMFs will um, shut off our melatonin production. And we know that melatonin is a cytotoxic hormone that kills breast cancer cells and a lot of other kinds of cancers. <clears throat> so really paying attention to your, you know, to your environment and then learning how to uh, detox your body is also important because no matter how clean we try to eat, right? Or what we how clean we try to stay, it's in the air, it's in the water, it's in everything. So, you know, filters in your shower and bathtub, and and uh, drink you know purified filtered water. Uh, <clears throat> do dry skin brushing, coffee enemas, saunas. Um, saunas are a great way to detox those heavy metals from uh, environmental pesticides and, and, and chemicals. And, and speaking of metals, you know, metals act the same way. They're called metalloestrogens. <laughs> They'll mimic and stimulate estrogen production in the body. And so mercury, aluminum, lead, cadmium, nickel, all of those are, they're environmental. And so we're exposed to them. So really, you know, clean out your body on a regular basis. More in details about things like mercury, which um, are related to dental fillings, What's your take? Um, so I had somebody on the week in the week, on the weekend mentioning uh, a story that she had um, when she went to remove her uh, fillings, old silver fillings, that um, at the time didn't have she didn't have access to a biological dentist, and it mm. was mm. not very safely done. So mm. when they drilled into the tooth, they it was powder inside, and. Uh, we started talking about how dentists have this high rate of uh, suicide, for example. Like, I'm sure that the exposure to this stuff is not very good for them. But then, of course, the person that has the fillings and always trying to take them out not in a safe way, that can be good. So if people have that experience, what do they do? And how to avoid that experience in the first place? What do you think they should do? So essential number five is to embrace biological <laughs> dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> falling right along into the, the seven essentials. You know? <laughs> um, and so, you know, a question that comes up often is, oh, I've had these fillings in here for 25 years. They, they must be okay. No, they're not okay. Because there's a YouTube video called Smoking Teeth where there's a dentist who's holding, you know, an extracted tooth and an old filling and he rubs it. I guess it's a toothbrush and and you can see behind on the green screen, the methyl mercury vapors escaping from that tooth. Wow. And so no matter how old they are, they're still releasing that methyl mercury vapor. So it's so important for you to work with a biological dentist because those are the things that you have in your mouth are extremely toxic. So those silver fillings are 50% mercury. And if it's not done properly, it can dump a lot of mercury into your body. So important to work with the um, you know, in, in, well, they're international, actually, they're called smart dentists. They, they've been trained to do smart mercury um, and amalgam removal technique. That's what it stands for, smart. And you, and believe me, they use proper techniques. They dam the, the, the mouth. So only the tooth is exposed. They use high powered um, mercury filters by the mouth. They, you know, they're covered from head to toe and they cover the patient from head to toe for protection. And, you know, a lot of them will use ozone and uh, IV vitamin C while they're doing the procedure. So <clears throat> they take a lot of precautions. And so definitely work with a biological dentist to get rid of the amalgams. A root canal is another issue. It's uh, like having a dead organ in your body. So if you have one, you know, if that, sits in, that is sitting on a meridian that corresponds to the breast tissue because our teeth are connected to our organs through the acupuncture meridian system, that can weaken that meridian and it suppresses your immune system because of all the toxicity in that root canal. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> What's that? 
Yes, absolutely. I have a story about that. <laughs> yes. And then, you know, cavitations, not something people talk too much about. It's not a cavity, it's a cavitation. It's an infection in the bone. And that happens after you've had an extraction and the, the socket wasn't cleaned out properly. So then it starts to decay the bone. It literally puts a hole in the bone. It's an infection. And that can have the same impact as a root canal or you know, um, gum disease, you know, uh, postmenopausal women um, who have gum disease are twice as likely to develop breast cancer. So there's, you know, the dental aspect is extremely important. Yeah. And also not smoking, because imagine if you're smoking on top of everything else. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking about somebody I know that has gum disease and smokes and it, there's no way of making her oh. stop. I know. It, I don't think she's interested in living. <laughs> That's, I come to that conclusion now. Um, but about the root canal is so interesting because um, when I started getting healthier again, like, like two years ago, I went to see, um, I thankfully found a very nice integrative doctor here. So I went to do my checkup and he, he was doing the thermal scan and he actually saw a little bit of the redness in my breast, but also he saw it in my mouth. And, yeah. um, and so I went to see my biological dentist and she said, yeah, your root canal needs to come out. And I must say, I, I was like, okay, I need a couple of months because I need to mourn the loss of this tooth because it was still my tooth anyway. And I had to really grieve and then I was ready. And I must say, I was so happy because it was in the front. This was mostly affecting my digestive system. Yeah. Um, but um, I felt immediately better. And I'm so happy that it all happened at the same time because I managed to clean my body so much that I didn't even have to take painkillers or antibiotics. And um, I really just started healing from that time really naturally again. And uh, it's amazing what it does into your body. I can't even explain it. It's like the next day, this heaviness is off mm -hmm. you. You just yeah. feel lighter. So yeah, root canals, big, big. And I don't even know why dentists don't notice when they do it. All the old-fashioned ones <laughs> right okay. well they're still looking at this they're not looking at this with the whole body dental connection right yeah and not only that's changing yes thankfully it is and uh you know the more i talk to different amazing holistic uh coaches and therapists and doctors the more this uh, message comes through that we are we really need to look at the body as a whole and not try to dissect every single part of it and thinking that it wor works silo we we are so connected. One thing will affect the other. I mean, the mouth affects your heart. You know, mm -hmm. that's great. Like I never, I was like, yeah, of course it does. Like the bacteria in your mouth and you, even your brain. And of course, again, when you talked about mercury, I mean, the mercury goes into the brain from the mouth. If it's not, you know, well, when you have these fillings, it's incredible how we don't connect these dots. Um, but yeah, it's powerful to actually know it and then do something about it. What's your best or favorite uh, detoxification protocol that you really would uh, definitely say, yes, start with this? Because I'm thinking women that my final lump and they're like, okay, I've got cancer. What do I do now? How do I know how to cleanse my body to begin with? Um, I think my first go-to detoxification is the coffee enema, um, simply because it affects um, so many systems. I mean, it's you're not really cleaning out your colon, but you're... Um, you know, you're stimulating your liver, you know, it's going, it's being absorbed through the portal vein, through the back door into the liver. It's flushing the liver, it's stimulating bile production, stimulating the, uh, the gallbladder, it's increasing your glutathione by up to 200%. And we know, you know, glutathione is extremely powerful in our detoxification process. So coffee enemas have always been a go-to, um, you know, and sweating, sweating is, is so important. Uh, there was a study, they call it the, the bun study. It was blood, uh, a bus study, sorry, blood, urine, and saliva. And they looked at the three um, ways of detoxification and they measured um, the blood, the urine, and the saliva to see, you know, the blood, urine, and the sweat, sorry, after being in a sauna. And the highest levels of heavy metals was found in the sweat. So, you know, even if people do other kinds of detoxification, sweating really brings out those heavy metals much more effectively than, than any other way right now. Wow. 
Um, you mentioned on, I saw this on social media, you mentioned castor oil packs and I never came across them. Could you explain the mechanics of them and how they work? Yes, yes, yes. So castor oil uh, has been around for thousands of years and it's a very simple uh, remedy where you apply castor oil to a cotton or flannel pad and you can put it over your liver, you can put it over your breast area and apply some heat, not a heating pad, but like a hot water bottle or you know something that doesn't have EMF with it. And the rinolaic acid in the castor oil um, is anti-inflammatory and it stimulates the liver production. And it, it's just a, a really good way to cleanse on a regular basis. And it's simple to do, you know, you just put it on at night if you want, wrap it around and you know, that's, that's, that's all there is to it. So oh, wow. very and simple, but effective. Are you meant to see something in the morning, like any changes in the color of the pad or, or you just don't have to like, it's just. Yeah, no, you don't really see anything come out per se, but um, you know, you, you definitely feel that cleansing effect. And a lot of people have noticed, uh, you know, more consistent, better, like better bowel movements, better digestion, um, even balancing your hormones better, because we know that the liver plays a big part in breaking down our hormones and methylating and metabolizing and excreting them. So um, it's a simple tool that has a lot of benefits to it. Brilliant. I, I think I'll link um, the one you're using. If, if you still have it on social media, so people actually can use the one. I thought that was uh, very nice and I wish we could get it here in Europe. Maybe we can, I have to investigate. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I thought, it, oh, that's brilliant. I never heard that before. I mean, I, no, I normally know about castor oil for constipation. <laughs> oh, <Okay. laughs> So grandma was like, here. <laughs> right, right. So, but i uh, never heard it for detoxing. That's so great. I love all these methods. Methods. And uh, I actually started even doing coffee enemas a few years ago after watching the documentaries um, that you were in, um, uh, The Truth About Cancer, mm -hmm. because um, they also interviewed uh, Charlotte Gerson and uh, the Gerson therapy is all about doing coffee enemas. And um, I must say, I do recognize the, the value of it because um, obviously a lot of times when we detoxify um, the rubbish stayed into our blood. So we want to make sure it gets out of the body as quick as possible. So that's, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I mean, you know, you have to always fight the naysayers. And that's my next question. My question, how did you come across people that so, said, uh, you know, okay, it works for you, but it's not something everybody can do, or it doesn't work, you know, like we have to just trust the doctors. Have you ever come across people like that? Oh, all the time. Um, but you know, the, the science is there. Um, it, I mean, all the studies show us that um, even if you choose to do conventional treatments, if you, for example, if you fast 48 hours before, during and after you do chemo, you have fewer side effects and the chemotherapy is more effective. You know, it kills more cancer and the tumor load goes down quicker. Um, the, the fact that, um, I mean, just go to um, pubmed.org, you know, the National Library of, of uh, Medicine, where all the studies are published on one place, and just put in vitamin C and breast cancer, vitamin D or selenium or zinc or, you know, agaricus, medicinal mushrooms, I mean, the list goes on and on, curcumin, and, you know, you'll see the positive effect that these substances have on improving your body not some of them actually kill cancer cells some of them lower inflammation some of them boost your immune system but you know the science is there i mean it's it's irrefutable yeah i agree and um you talked about something uh, very specific here doing fasting before chemo which i think is actually quite a key component of the next question i would like you to discuss the impact of sugar on um, on cancer cells because there is this, again, I said it before, right? The, the oncologists are like, we'll do chemo, don't worry about it, just eat ice cream, make sure that you don't lose weight. But there is a special relationship between sugar and, um, and chemotherapy, oh, sorry, and cancer. And um, I'd like you to elaborate on that because you probably are the best person that can actually describe it in a way that is <laughs> digestible for people. Because um, people don't think about that, but you know, it's insane that like eat ice cream when you are <laughs> doing, when you're sick, that's crazy, you know? So when somebody ingests 
refined sugar. It suppresses their immune system by 50% for up to four hours. Wow. And so number one, it suppresses your immune system. Number two, it feeds the cancer cells. Cancer cells don't breathe oxygen like our healthy cells do, but they breathe through a process called glycolysis or the breakdown of blood sugar. And they have more insulin receptor sites around their cells than our healthy cells do. So they love that glucose. And so the, I mean, there's so many studies that show that, you know, diabetics, pre-diabetics, obese women have a much higher risk of breast cancer because of the blood sugar being off. So that's part of our essential number one. We, we coach women and we teach them how to monitor their blood sugar and you know how to fast and do intermittent fasting because when you keep that blood sugar nice and low and you're not spiking your insulin all the time you're keeping your inflammatory process down there's a there's a genetic pathway called the mTOR pathway it's a cellular growth pathway and you can keep that pathway over excited by continuously feeding sugars and refined carbohydrates and so it's, a, it's an important part of, of the healing process. And, you know, not just for cancer, but, but for any disease, really. Yeah, absolutely. That's why medicine should be in our plate. Um, you're totally right about that. Um, what about genetics? So we talked about lifestyle, but a lot of people say, well, I'm genetically destined to get breast, breast cancer. Now we know that through epigenetic, that's not the case. Like we can avoid diseases, not just because our parents have a predis I mean, I am predisposed to diabetes, which is why uh, you have to be careful with sugar, but I, I still can control it. Like I can reverse it. I have to make sure I don't get it by looking after myself. Is it the same thing with cancer? Absolutely. 5% um, of cancers may be genetic, um, but 95% of them are environmental and lifestyle. So for that 5%, so right away, we think of breast cancer, we think of the BRCA gene. Mm. So BRCA is a tumor suppressor gene. It's a good mm. gene. And um, there's, uh, and I forget the name of the study, but on um, Dr. Michael Greger's website, nutritionfacts.org, there's an actual study that shows that eating, I think it's a, a cup and a half or a cup and a quarter of edamame beans every day can literally reverse the BRCA gene mutation. Hmm. And so just like if you're predisposed to diabetes, you know, you're careful about your lifestyle and your food choices. If you have a BRCA gene that's positive, you want to make sure that your hormones stay balanced and that you practice every aspect of the seven essentials. And, you know, we see many women with BRCA gene positive that, you know, start off coming to us because they have breast cancer, but they change their lifestyle and they apply the seven essentials and they get better, even like triple negative and BRCA gene positive. That's a tough combination. We have women that, that do very well with that. That's brilliant. So, and it, it kind of breaks the myth of having to remove your breasts um, if you have those genes, because that's a very popular choice, um, I think, because of a celebrity. Um, right. I don't remember who it was, but um, I, I think, well, it became such a big thing. Like women are like, I'm just going to take everything out. But then again, when we look at the body as a whole, if the cancer doesn't come out in, in the tissue that you removed, where does it go? Because if you're not changing your lifestyle, you're still at risk, right? Yes. And, you know, we, we talk about this, we teach this in our community, it's not just getting rid of the lump or the bump, right? You can cut that out, radiate it, do whatever chemo, but if you don't get to the root cause of what allowed the cancer to show up in the first place, you're gonna have a recurrence. And so we teach women how to prevent a recurrence. You know, There's no need to fear breast cancer if you understand what cancer is and what it's not, and how you have a large measure of control on how your body responds to healing. Yeah, that's brilliant. So what about um, prevention? What are your uh, favorite ways to monitor um, our health so that we know that if we are seeing something? Because I believe things like mammogram, which are advised to women in, in Europe anyway, from 50 onwards, um, are not really good at spotting the cancer in advance. You're already there. Um, mm -hmm. And they're also not very good for you. 
So what are the best ways to actually monitor and make sure that you know what's happening in your body? So if you, if you choose to get a mammogram, um, make sure you back it up with an ultrasound because you know one window is not good enough when it comes to breast cancers because there's so many false negatives and false positives with mammography. Um, so you know ultrasounds is very good. A thermography is very good because it's going to read the infrared heat coming off your body. So if there's inflammation, it's going to show up on the screen and you know give you an, an idea of what's happening. Um, a breast self-exam is very important. Um, there's this great little tool here called My Breast Friend. Um, this was uh, a model that was used to train doctors for over 30 years uh, from the Mamacare company. And they use this model because it's got lumps and bumps in it. And it, there's a whole training system that teaches you, you know, where to feel, how to feel, and what to feel for. And so doing a breast exam is extremely important because even if you get screened once a year, there's still 364 days of the year, right? Where your breast tissue can change. Mm -hmm. And um, monitoring through blood work. I mean, there's so many different tests, just looking at inflammatory markers, your vitamin D levels, your, um, you know, you know look, at, look at heavy metals. Um, you can do, you know, the typical cancer markers that conventional medicine uses. And now there's more and more tests called liquid biopsies, where they look at free-floating cancer DNA methylation in the blood, and they can tell you what kind of cancer you have. I mean, there's one test called the gallery test that looks at 50 different kinds of cancers just wow. through blood work. Um, there's another test called the RGCC test or the grease test that can detect circulating tumor cells in the blood. So even if you have the tumor cut out, you're still going to have circulating tumor cells. And so they, they filter the blood, they collect those cancer cells, they grow them, and then they uh, test 50 different natural substances against your cancer cells to see which ones are more effective. So it's brilliant technology and it's you know helped so many women around the world. Is it available? So in the US, you guys have... Um you have to pay for your insurance. Is it available through insurance? Or is this like something that people have to pay? Yeah, for? cash pay. And, and they're, they're, all, they're in Greece, obviously, but they're all over Europe. I mean, they're all over the world. So definitely recommend that test. That's brilliant. I think when we talked about cancer with one of the doctors, he mentioned it too. And um, yeah, even here it's not covered. I was wondering if, and then my question is, why is it not covered? Because if this is such a good way to find out what works for each person specifically, right, for their cancer, why is this not the first thing that people do or doctors do? Uh, because you're fighting against a multi, multi-billion dollar cancer machine. And it's, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's, it's the money, follow the money trail, right? Big pharma, big cancer. I mean, they're all connected. And um, it's sad because, you know, millions of people die needlessly. Yeah. So my last question that really relates to that, and I know you, you have to go and you have a busy schedule. So what about this um, movement that they have every year? So I'm a big, big spokesperson for your breast matters every day and cancer awareness is every day. But obviously they have in October, I believe, this pink ribbon and I actually once um, wanted to join Cancer um, Research UK. Uh, I was leaving my job in banking. I thought I want to be in a charity and actually make a difference. And when I went for my interview, of course, I was like, oh, my ideas were very holistic. I didn't get the job. <laughs> so nice. so I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, what about that? So what is your take on that movement, which really is quite profitable, I would yeah. say very profitable and and less than five percent of all that money that is collected goes to prevention research 50 something percent goes to more beneficial drug therapy so we know where it's going right big pharma mm -hmm. um and so you know we call it the pink month and you know they say breast cancer awareness month we renamed it to bam breast health awareness month right because it's not about detecting breast cancer it's about keeping your body healthy so you don't have breast cancer mm. um so it's it's unfortunate i mean there's a lot of women who fall into that pink movement pink ribbon movement and and you know they do have some community support so it, it gives them something that they need 
Um, but it's a matter of, you know, educating women. And, you know, right now, actually, you know, I've expanded my, my approach in reaching women for many years. I was just, you know, heal breast cancer naturally, that's it. But in surveying our community, we realized that about 70% of women did some form of conventional treatment. So to be of better service to them and women in the pink movement who kind of want to know about nutrition and all these other things, but they're afraid and they don't know because their oncologist isn't going to tell them. Well, now we're going to be able to reach them because I've created a program called How to Survive and Thrive, Beating Breast Cancer with Conventional Treatments and Natural Medicine. So combining the two together and giving women balance because I've seen in my community, women who came to us, you know, stage four, stage three, and they needed some form of treatment to really put the fire out temporarily. And sometimes that's what it takes. But in the meantime, they were also applying the seven essentials and really changing everything about their life. And they got better. I mean, mm -hmm. metastasis in the bones reversed, lung mets reversed, liver, you know, so the body is so amazing in its ability to heal if you give it what it needs. Yeah, and, and some people don't have the option of not doing some conventional because they have pressure at home too. Right, and the cost, you know? So, I mean, I really, in a sense, admire women who who do chemotherapy because it's they know what they're getting into. It's, a, it's not a pleasant experience, but they're determined to do whatever it takes to, to try and survive, right? Yeah, and I can't blame them for that. Um, yeah. So your your coaching and your programs, they're all on your website, of course, and we will put them in the show notes. Do you want to just tell women how to join, what to expect, and then you know we, they can know what what this this is all about? Because I think it's fabulous. Uh, yes, uh, breastcancerconquer.com. We're all over social media. Uh, you can write to support at breastcancerconquer.com if you have any questions. If you're want to know about our coaching. I mean, everything's there on our website. So um, definitely, you know, this is a good place to start. Heal Breast yeah. Cancer Naturally. Um, number one bestseller on Amazon in uh, 10 categories and 10 countries. So congratulations. Well-deserved. Yeah. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Beautiful. And this coaching program, is it also available for good and beneficial for women that don't have cancer, but want to prevent it? Absolutely. Yeah. We have a whole preventative aspect of our coaching as well. Oh, fantastic. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. V. I really appreciate your time. I know you have to go, so I'm not going to keep you longer. I have a million questions <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Chantal. I enjoyed spending the time with you. Yeah, me too. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. B. And thank you everyone for staying on to this wonderful episode. I am really happy and blessed that we had it and really thankful that Dr. B made the time. She's a very busy woman and I am so happy and so grateful. I cannot even stop saying that. I would love to know what you think, but also to make sure that you are empowered. So in the show notes, you can find out everything about Dr. B's programs and books. And I really urge you to take this moment to really start your learning journey into preventing and healing, reversing, and really getting your body better, not just from cancer, really from anything. The, the steps that are in the book, the steps that are in the program are really applicable for any disease, I really believe. And also, it's great for prevention, so we all eligible for this program, and I really think you should consider it in order to be really in the um, in a good place when it comes to our health because nobody can look after our bodies as we do. So guys, please leave a review, send us love and make sure that you share. I'll see you.